So, after many years of waiting, I finally got a chance to get back on a cruise ship for a vacation. But in this day and age, everybody still needs to be connected even though they're on vacation, right? Many cruise companies like Seaborn, Silver Sea, Viking, and Virgin, they all have free Wi-Fi included in the cost of the cruise. And other companies like Princess, Royal Caribbean, and Celebrity, they charge about $15 to $30 a day per device. So one simple solution is just to purchase a Wi-Fi package for the cruise. And me and my wife, we were on a Princess cruise ship, and the pricing for their medallion net is about $15 a device a day. And for me and my wife, we each have a phone and an iPad, so that means we will need to get four devices connected at the same time. You can get a deal and pay for four devices, which drops the prices down to about $10 a day per device. So if you do the math, that basically adds up to $10 a day per device times seven days for the cruise times four devices, that's $280. Hey, I understand the cruise companies need to make money, but they got to understand that I want to be cheap. So after Googling around for a solution, a travel router emerged as one of the easier and relatively cheap solutions. One thing to note, I am not hacking the ship's network. I am paying for a legit account. I'm just trying to not pay for four devices to access the network at the same time. So what I'm doing is that I'm aggregating all of our devices through the travel router, which is using the purchased account. The drawback is that all the traffic from our devices are now going through the travel router. So what I save in not paying for more devices, I pay for a reduction in speed. So first, let's talk briefly about MedallionNet. This is the network on Princess cruise ships that allow you to connect to the ship's network as well as the internet. You can actually access the ship services for free. Those services are available just via the Medallion app and include a guide to all of the ship's onboard activities, shoreside uh, transactions, port guides, reservations for restaurants, ordering food, viewing and purchasing photos, and a ship map. Uh, which also includes a way to find your companions on the ship. And that was actually kind of cool. You can track where everybody in your group is at any time. Princess does not advertise this, but I found that I can get messages on my iPhone without having to pay. Right? So this is convenient for keeping in touch with your travel companions on the ship. However, if you want to access your emails or web surf, then you have to purchase a Wi-Fi package that I talked about earlier. You can purchase a one device plan to be shared between you and your traveling companion, but that means that only one person at a time can log in. Right? If you're okay with time sharing the internet connection, then that's not a big deal. If you both want to be accessing the internet at the same time, then you'll need to pay for two devices or use a travel router, which is what I'm gonna show you how to do. The travel router I used was a TP-Link AC750 which runs about 40 US dollars on Amazon. And as you can see, this guy is actually pretty small. It kind of fits in the palm of my hand. The basic router comes with a WAN LAN Ethernet port, a mode switch that allows you to choose between sharing your Ethernet, sharing your hotspot, or an access point or range extender. On the other side, you have a micro USB port for power, a reset switch, and then a USB-A port for file sharing. To get started, you just want to make sure the mode switch is in the middle position, which is share hotspot. Then you can connect the TP-Link router to power using the micro USB port. And you can wait a few seconds for the green lights to blink and then stay on. Once they're on, you can use your phone or your tablet or your computer to connect to Wi-Fi and look specifically for the TP-Link device. And you can tell the name of the device. It's going to be also listed on the back of uh, the device itself. And hopefully your neighbors in the other cabins are not all doing the same thing. So you should see only one obvious one that says TP link something. Once connected, you can use a browser to connect to HTTP colon slash slash TP link Wi-Fi dot net or just type in 192.168.0.1. The credentials to log on are printed on the back of your device. So go ahead and enter those, and then you can connect. 
you should now see the admin page for the router. So let's go ahead and use the quick setup to get things rolling. The first thing to choose is the addressing type. Since we're going to be using the ship's network, I'm going to go ahead and choose dynamic IP to let the ship assign us an IP. Next, it will ask us which network to connect to. So go ahead and scan through the list here and find the strongest network. So on the ship, you will probably only see networks from the ship unless the guy in the next cabin next to you is doing the same thing that you are. One assumption here is that you are going to be leaving your router in the same location throughout your cruise within your cabin. Otherwise, it's, it may have uh, issues connecting. The next screen is the client settings screen where you will enter the password for the ship's network. So you'll get that when you pay for your internet package. And you can set up your 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz networks by changing the network names if you want to. I would suggest that you change it to something unique and easy to remember instead of the default TP link dash whatever gibberish. Because again, if your neighbor is doing the same thing, then you might be trying to log on to his network instead of your own network. And you can also change the password to something that's easier to remember. Now you're ready to go. On the devices that you want to connect to the internet, just select the network name that you just created and the password you just created. You should now be able to connect multiple devices to the travel router and only use one account. One thing to note is that the bandwidth on the ship's network was not impressive at all. I spoke with various other passengers and they had the same sentiment. There is a lag to everything and the speed is just super slow. I don't know how people can do any streaming or video conferencing as I wasn't even able to get my emails in a timely manner. But hey, you know what? That's okay. I'm on vacation uh, and the ship's entertainment system comes with so many movies and TV shows, you really don't need your streaming service. And if you're the guy streaming Disney Plus and slowing down the whole ship, stop it. So the conclusion is that the travel router worked great. As long as we were in our cabin, the wife and I could both use our phones and other devices all at the same time. Granted, we didn't do anything heavy duty like streaming Netflix, so we did not notice any speed slowdowns due to each other. The biggest test was of my wife's patience in waiting for me to set up the travel router, which actually did not take long at all. And then her tolerance for not having any internet access until she gets back in our cabin. Sadly though, because we are all so addicted to the internet 24-7, for our next cruise, I'm actually considering spending the extra $150 to $200 so that we can both be on the internet anytime and anywhere on the ship. Hope this was useful for your future cruising experience. Help me out by clicking the like button below, not for the mysterious YouTube algorithm, but just to boost my personal ego. And if you're interested in learning about networking, watch these videos here. Make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and safe travels.